Okay, what's going on guys and welcome back. Today, I want to do a quick comparison on different pressure washers and foam cannons and let you know that it doesn't really matter what type of pressure washer you're using because most generic pressure washers will actually do the job. Now, you see other people out there using those high, high pressure washers like the, the petrol pressure washers and they get the thick sudsy foam. But I'm here to let you know that you don't actually need anything like that. So, as long as your pressure washer is able to run at about 1100 PSI continuously and can actually put out at least 6 litres per minute, which is about 1.4 gallons per minute, you're able to get that foam. But the main thing to remember here is that you need to be able to mix the soap properly. So here I have three pressure washers and these are just generic cheap ones, okay? So this was $100 and actually comes with quite a lot of stuff. but. All the attachments are pretty much just rubbish. Now, and here is the typical Karcher pressure washer, which is about $100 as well. And then you have this little cheap one, which was only $80. Now, the only difference with this one is that you don't actually get any attachments that allows you to do any uh, foam cannon washing. So you have to pretty much swap out your hose or buy an attachment that will allow you to convert the end into something like this so that you can attach a um, wand or a pressure washer gun to it and then you're able to attach a foam cannon and then get that thick sudsy foam. All these machines pretty much run at or above 1100 psi continuously and they all do 6 litres per minute. So I'm here to show you that it doesn't matter, you don't have to go, go out and spend three four hundred dollars on a generic pressure washer or a pressure washer like a gas petrol uh, pressure washer you just need something that will suffice now especially if you're at a home DIYer then you know you don't have to go crazy and buy something that's way out of range like you know the Kranzel or the Karcher HD 600 those I mean those machines are actually brilliant and I'm actually contemplating getting one but that's only if it's within your budget and you're really into detailing and you want the best equipment. But if you're on a budget and you just want something that will suffice, honestly, any of these machines will do. Except, however, like I said, this machine, you're just going to have to change it to a different hose and then you're able to attach a different gun to it in order to get a um, foam cannon attached and then get the thick sudsy foam. Okay, and just to show you that I have three foam cannons here. These are two cheap generic Chinese ones and these ones have been doing me wonders for so long now. I've had these for at least almost a year now and I pretty much detail two, three cars a week which are my own personal cars and my partner's car. And then finally I shelled out and finally got a MTM Hydro PF22 foam cannon. Now this is the mother of all foam cannons. It's, it's all over the YouTube, it's everywhere. Everyone's talking about it, saying that, you know, it's the best built one, etc. But I have to tell you that when I first got this, it was appalling. I could not get any thick sudsy foam for the life of me. And I'll actually tell you why. These foam cannons actually come with a standard 1.1 mil orifice. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's actually the little part that sits inside um, the foam cannon and it has a little orifice and it measures the orifice let me show you okay so it's this part right here and I actually give you a closer peek right here and this thing actually is what determines how much foam you're going to get out of your foam cannon now these cheap China, uh, these cheap generic foam cannons that you can find all over eBay and Amazon for like $20 they actually do the job and they all come with a 1.1 mil orifice Whereas the MTM Hydro Foam Cannon actually comes with a 1.25 mil orifice standard. So that's probably the main reason as to why you're not going to kick sudsy foam straight off the bat with a MTM Hydro Foam Cannon. When I first got this, I was appalled. I was like, how come I'm not getting the foam like everyone is showing on YouTube, etc. But then after a little bit of research and I finally got the manual to this because it didn't come with a manual I had to ask the person for a manual and then I finally figured out that the reason why I'm not getting the thick sudsy phone is simply because 
it came with the wrong orifice for the type of pressure washer that I'm using and most importantly it's how you use it so normally with the generic foam cannons you actually use it by turning it to the least amount of water that will come through compared to the soap okay and with the MTM foam cannon you don't actually turn it to the negative side okay because there's a little knob on top that allows you to turn it to positive or negative now with the generic foam cannons I always turn it to negative all the way because I want the least amount of water to come through in order to get more soap but with the MTM foam can it actually works in the opposite way which is why I wasn't getting any thick sudsy foam because you actually need to turn it to positive and how this works is when you turn it to po positive it's telling the foam cannon to draw more soap out of the bottle to mix with the water in order to get you that thick sudsy foam whereas I was used to turning it to the negative side so that it would draw less water and more soap would go through in order to give you that foam and that's the reason why I wasn't getting that thick foam so you know sometimes it's really important that you actually go through the manual and see how it works because like I said when I first got this I wasn't getting any foam I was basically just shooting straight water out and it was just dripping off the end like it was coming off a, a water hose okay so it's really important that you understand how it works because obviously if you don't get how it works then you're not going to be able to use it properly like I was and I was struggling and I was really disappointed and almost at the point of returning it but then once once I got the manual off the seller and I read through it and found out that it had a different size orifice it was used differently then I was able to get that thick sudsy foam and now I, I will have to admit that yes it is pretty good but with the money that you pay for this is it really worth it to buy something like this over a $20 foam cannon that will do the exact same job and so long as you take care of it and always clean it it's always going to do the same job as any other foam cannon honestly you know you see other foam cannons out there and they're all rebranded with like Torx, chemical guys things like that but basically they are just this foam cannon rebranded so for them to charge you fifty to eighty dollars for a foam cannon that's basically a twenty dollar foam cannon what is the freaking point you know that's just gimmicks and it's just their sales tactics this is the only one that I have seen that is actually built differently now you actually can look at it and you can see that it's a sturdier built it, it has an extra function compared to the rest now what that is is this actually only shoots vertically and you can just adjust it like any other foam cannon however with the MTM you can actually turn it horizontal if you just turn this gray part here you can actually turn it horizontal or have it spray vertical now that's a cool feature but honestly if you if you really anal about that and you want it to be able to spray horizontally all you have to do is turn it on its side it's as simple as that you're going to get a little bit of drip because there are actually air holes at the top here but that's fine you know it's it's not really gonna matter so I'm gonna give you guys a quick demonstration but I wanted to stress again that there are actually say a few main reasons why you're not gonna get thick sudsy foam and one is your soap to water ratio now for me I to one liter I actually use about 150 to 200 maximum now I mainly only use about a hundred mils to a liter and that will suffice I mean that is plenty you know I always get thick foam but you know it actually depends on your personal preference how much foam you want compared to somebody else if you really want thick sudsy foam personally for me 100 to 150 to one liter is perfect and if you want even more then you could probably even go with 200 and it's going to give you hardcore foam and then also the orifice is very important okay if you're using a low pressure washer compared to an extremely high pressure washer like a petrol pressure washer where they go up to like 4,000 psi and you're going to need a 1.2 mil orifice but even the 1.1 mil orifice is going to do the job because as long as you're able to get 1100 psi continuously then a 1.1 mil orifice is always going to do the job and as long as you mix the soap properly then you're also going to uh, be able to get that thick foam that everybody's looking for 
So they're the three main factors. These three factors are going to make sure that you get foam each and every time you use your foam cannon. So now I'm going to give you guys a quick demonstration. Okay, I'm going to start with this little generic green pressure washer here. And then from there, I'm going to switch to the Karcher and show you that it also does the exact same thing. And then I'm going to switch over to this little bugger right here. And it's also going to give me that thick sudsy foam that everybody's looking for. The only difference is I'm going to have to take the gun off here and then switch it over to this because I've actually bought a new hose attachment so that I can actually use an M22 gun and then simply and then switch over the, the gun to whatever machine I want. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Attached, ready to go. There you go guys, look at how thick this foam is. Look at that. Now, if that is not thick sudsy foam out of a cheap generic machine, I don't know what is. Okay, now just look at that, look at how thick it is, look at the way it runs off the car. And now, we're going to use the Karcher and another cheap Chinese generic one and show you that it will do the exact same job. Okay, here we go. Okay. So this is the Karcher, okay? And there you have it, the Karcher with a uh, generic foam cannon. And now I'm going to use the MTM foam cannon and I'm going to use the exact same machine and show you that it's going to produce the exact same results. As you can see here, the foam is exactly the same, okay? There isn't much difference in an MTM foam cannon versus a generic $20 one. So, you know, this is the evidence right here, guys. Now, I'm going to use the last machine that I have just to show you that all three of these machines are able to produce the same amount of foam. Okay, so here we go. Okay, now this is the last machine. I'm just setting it up real quick. And now we're going to use a cheap generic one again. And now we're going to try it out again. So you saw firsthand how the Karcher does it and how the other green pressure washer does the same thing. Now I'm going to show you that that little cheap $80 one will do the exact same job. Here we go. Cheap generic one. Look at how thick that is. There you have it. All three produce thick sudsy foam. And I've used the exact same mixture in every single bottle. So, you know, that's just proof that you don't have to go out spend like more than a hundred dollars on a foam cannon when you can just buy these cheap generic ones off ebay or amazon and get the exact same results and i just wanted to show you one more time how the karcher performs okay with the mtm foam cannon
Okay, and there you have it again. Look at how thick that foam is. Okay, and well, there you have it guys. You've seen here firsthand that it doesn't matter if you're using a cheap generic foam cannon compared to a hundred dollar foam cannon, you're still going to get the same results and you're going to get that thick sudsy foam regardless. So long as you remember the important factors that I mentioned, which is make sure that whatever pressure washer you're using, that it at least has 1100 PSI continuous pressure and that the orifice you're using is 1.1 mil. And last but not least, the soap to water ratio. So long as you're using at least 150 mils to one liter, you are always going to get that thick sudsy foam, as you saw yourself in the video. But like I said, it's all personal preference. It's totally up to you. Don't let somebody else tell you how to mix your soap. It's all about trial and error and finding what works for you. I'm also going to stress again that it doesn't matter what pressure washer you use, even if you have one that works up to 4,000 PSI. The best way to be sure that you're going to get that thick sudsy foam is make sure you switch out your orifice to a 1.1 mil orifice and I guarantee you, if you get the soap mixture right and your, your electric pressure washer has at least 1100 PSI con consistent pressure, then you're always going to get that thick sudsy foam. And that's all there is to it. However, I'm also going to stress here that if you are a, a hardcore detailer or maybe you own your own detailing business, then yeah, you probably want to go for the better foam cannon. And you're probably going to want to go for a better machine because you're washing every day and it's your daily job. But for at-home DIY detailers like myself, we don't need such hardcore equipment. But I'm also going to say that if you actually think about it, if your generic bottle malfunctions and you know you throw it away after a year or two years then you're probably actually better off buying the MTM foam cannon because it's actually going to last a lot longer but remember that also depends on if you actually maintain it and clean it after every wash because the truth is you're not supposed to leave soap in the bottle you're actually supposed to empty it out and then put the bottle through a bucket of water or fill it up with just water and then squirt that all out until all the soap is cleaned out of the foam cannon and Another thing is, as for these pressure washers, say these things give in after two years. So if you were to spend a thousand dollars on something like a Kranzel or a Karcher HD 600, the really hardcore electric pressure washers that are actually built really, really well and built to last, they're German made and they're just an overall better electric pressure washer, then if you actually think about it, it might actually be worth it to buy something like that because Remember, if you're buying a $200 pressure washer and it gives in to you over, say, 2-3 years, then you're going to buy another one and if you really like that one, then you're going to double up, which is, say, 300 times 2, 600. And then within another 3 years, it's going to break again, then you're going to spend $1,000 over, say, 10 years. So, maybe you are better off just buying a Kranzel or a Karcher HD 600 those really expensive pressure washers or better yet if you just buy a, pre a petrol pressure washer with a good Honda engine and enough PSI then you never have to worry about not having enough PSI for your foam cannon just remember that if you're using a really high powered uh, pressure washer like a petrol one that has 4000 plus PSI then make sure that you hold your your gun a bit further away at least say 50 centimeters from the car because there is so much pressure coming out of those petrol pressure washers that run up to about 4,000 psi that you can actually begin to strip paint you know you know m many of you may not believe this but it is just true but that's also why it's actually a good idea to get one of these lower pressure washers because you don't have to worry about dinting your paint or your panels because you're holding it too close so long as you keep a good 30 centimeters from the car you're always going to get top results now that's everything I wanted to show you here today guys so I really hope this uh, helps you guys out figuring out what type of pressure washer you want to get and whether or not it's worth it to buy an MTM uh, hydro foam cannon so in my honest opinion I bought it because I I could afford it and I wanted to know what all the hype was about but as you saw firsthand 
it actually does the exact same thing as these generic foam cannons. Now, and I'll also say that with the pressure washers, it might actually be worth it to buy a really expensive one. Therefore, over time, you're pretty much going to pay the same amount that you're going to pay for that really expensive one, which is like a thousand dollars. And you're going to get a really, really good pressure washer that was built to last and you never have to worry about it failing on you because these things are extremely well built and definitely will last. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope that it helped you out and at the very least you were entertained. And as always, thanks very much for watching and we're almost at 200 subscribers. I really do thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I never thought that we'd get here. So let's try to get to a thousand. And I guarantee you, if we get there, even at 500, I promise you, we are going to do some giveaways and I'm going to give something away. Whether it be cash or prizes, I don't know yet. But let's get there and let's find out. Let's go on this journey together. And I truly am thankful, I truly am grateful. I am just so fortunate and I'm so happy to be able to share my passions and some uh, tips and tricks and also some, share some knowledge with you guys in hopes that it will help you guys save some money, help you guys make better decisions and help you buy some products and not waste money on certain products. Thank you again. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs and I'll see you guys in the next video.